Okay, hi class. We are on, let me zoom up here, Tabs and Tables, Chapter 5 of our textbook. And it's very exciting, as Terry Breiberg expresses in her handout. Exciting stuff. You can't help but get excited about tabs and tables. Um, because you'll definitely be ahead of the competition. Like, it'll save you so much time if you can set up tabs and tables properly. And um, that's, that's the main goal, is learning how to set up your InDesign document so that it's very easy to adjust and um, everything is easy to manipulate. So if you ever need to make changes, it's not the end of the world. And we're gonna go over examples of improper use of tabs and tables and then proper use and why the proper use is so much more efficient in the long run. Okay, so first I want to, let's see. Oh yeah, I wanted to show you examples of tabbing right here that she used even in her handout. So here we have examples of a tab to create, tab used to create different columns. So I'm, I'm like 100% sure she used tabs here. And then here's an example of a table with her keyboard shortcuts. So if you ever need to make tables, tables include cells and borders, or you can turn the borders off. You don't have to have them show, but they do include tables, columns, and rows. So there's this difference between tabs and tables. And we're gonna go over how to set them up properly in InDesign now. Using her, her demos, which come in your artwork and um, your project files. So you have your projects that are at the end of the chapter. Whoops, let me zoom out here so you can see. Okay, so these are the chapter five projects. Wow, I zoomed out. A little too much. My goodness, it's still zooming out. <laughs> I need to be more patient. Okay, so um, yeah, these are the projects at the end of the chapter, but even before you get to those, she has exercises in the chapter, so like as you're reading, you can practice along to kind of grasp the material as you go, and we're gonna go over those exercises, and I think at that point, it should be pretty clear how to do the end of the chapter projects. So we'll see how that goes. And I want to pull up her first one for tabs. And let's see. Um, it's I saved everything in my InDesign folder on my desktop. And under chapter five, it's under artwork and resources. That's what it's called. Artwork and resources for chapter five. And um, it's the tab tab demo folder folder and then I'm gonna open up my tabs demo IDML or INDD doesn't matter INDD is the InDesign file that was created in in her version of InDesign CS6 however the reason why she includes an IDML file is because IDML files can be read by different versions of InDesign because some people, like in the case that I had with, um, uh, what's it? But anyway, somebody, I had to ask them to send an IDML file because I only have CS6, but they had created something in Creative Cloud, which is like a, a higher version of InDesign. So um, in order for me to open that file, I needed them to save it in the IDML format. Anyway, this is a little bit of a tangent, but I wanted to just address that. So that's why you get two files. She gives you the IDML file and the her version of InDesign file. But basically, when you open them, they look exactly the same. Or they should, anyway. So I'm just waiting for it to open. I'm opening the IDML file. And so, yeah, if you send somebody, if somebody you know has, like, in design CS3 or CS4, and you're using a higher version, a uh, more recent version, I should say, then you need to save your file as an IDML if you want them to be able to edit it. So anyway, okay, and then the first thing that prompts me is that I don't have one of the fonts that are used in her document. So there's two things I can do about that, and one of which, whoops, one of them is to actually go and download this font called Light 
uh, universe 47 light condensed and she includes that in her package of artwork and resources she actually includes the fonts that you can then download and then add to your font book in your computer and then um, use but I don't want to do that right now so um, this it doesn't take that long but right now for this uh, if you do not have the font for example you want another option is to just choose find font which is this other option here that's prompting for me and um, the font that is missing the font that I do not have that she used in this document is noted with an exclamation mark and um, all I can do is just pick a different font to replace it at this point so if I'm not going to download the font universe then I have to find another replacement um, so what I'm going to do is, I think Universe is a sans serif font. Um, I'm going to replace it with a sans serif font that I think looks similar. And I just know that from experience, as you work with fonts more and more, you'll start to recognize some of them. And so I'm just going to change it. I'm going to replace it with Helvetica or, let's see, oh yeah, Futura, I think has. You want to find something that's also going to have condensed if it's um, the style is light condensed. Now Future doesn't have light condensed, it has condensed extra bold which I definitely don't want. Um, light means really thin strokes so I'm gonna go with the medium. It's gonna be a little thicker but at least it won't be too different. So um, and then all you have to do at that point after you've picked a different font to replace with and then another and you've chosen the style then all you do is hit change all. And then, now you can see there are no more exclamation marks because you figured everything out. And now you can see here, all that font is now replaced with future uh, condensed medium. Then hit done. So that might come in handy at some point if you're ever using a file or you're ever working on a file that somebody else worked on and you don't have the fonts, then you can replace their fonts. If there's no way to get them and it doesn't really matter, it's not life and death, for you to use the same fonts, you can always replace them. So anyway, that's not actually in the lesson, but I think it's a very important thing to know. All right, so now what we're gonna do is take a look at what a tab is. And you probably already have an idea about what a tab is, but I'm gonna zoom into the first exercise. On this page, There's um, it covers exercise one, two, three, and four. There's three pages in this document because there's nine different exercises in the chapter. And she's included all the, um, the materials to do the exercises in this one InDesign file. So there you go. Those are all the exercises. And I'm going to go over them one by one. So starting with exercise one, let's zoom in. So I'm going to hit Command plus plus. Or if you have a PC, it's Control plus plus or just control plus <laughs> until you get as close as you want. And I want to show you guys that, first of all, note that the hidden characters are already turned on and you definitely want to have them turned on when you're working with tabs so that you can see where your tabs are. And um, so here's a tab, here's a tab, here's a tab, here's a tab. There's a tiny little tab between Dr. Brian Johnson and Dr. Theodore Seuss. It almost looks like it's not a tab, but basically because Dr. Brian Johnson is a shorter, shorter verbiage than the Dr. William Sanchez and the one below, um, this tab, it, there was a tab between, let's see, between this tab and this tab that is being utilized at this point. So, um, even though she's tabbed everything correctly, there's only supposed to be one tab between each column. I'm going to call them columns because they're going to line up into different columns. Even though it's not lining up correctly, that's how you want to set it up. Now, incorrect people, or not incorrect people, um, people who set up tabs incorrectly will just tab again. So if I hit tab to get the text to line up, and um, 
visually it looks fine, but now there's two tabs in between Dr. Ryan Johnson and Dr. Theodore Suits. And that is incorrect. You're only supposed to have one tab. What you do when you're setting it up properly is later, you delete that tab, extra tab first, and then later you're gonna adjust the tabs so that all of the tabs line up. And um, that's formatting the tabs. A lot of people don't know how to format tabs and so they'll just keep pressing tab until things line up. Um, and the reason why every, every program has a default setting so whenever you hit tab, it tabs a certain amount and it'll always fall at that point. And then um, but you can adjust that later, and you're supposed to. <laughs> this is just the default. So I want to show you how to set those tabs and realign these columns so they look nice. And the first thing I need to do is get my tabs table, or my tabs window out. And at first I thought it would be under window because it's a little window or panel. I feel like um, Adobe programs in, use the word window and panel interchangeably, but um, usually all the panels are found here. However, I could not find it here and then I realized it was under the type menu. So because InDesign is focused on type heavily, the type actually has its own menu and um, so there's a lot of other panels that can only be found under the type menu and tabs is one of them. There's also a shortcut, uh, command shift T or control shift T, depending if you have a Mac or PC. Um, I don't know, I feel like <laughs> a little shortcut overload lately, so I'm just gonna focus on the long way of accessing it for now. Um, here is the tabs panel. It looks like a ruler and it kind of acts like a ruler too, so um, once you have the tabs panel on, you're going to take the selection tool and make sure that the correct text frame is selected that you want to start working with the tabs. And then you click on the little magnet, which is at the right corner of the ruler. And then what happens is it didn't move a whole lot, but it jumped down to align itself exactly to the text frame. And not exactly to the text, the ruler, actually, the zero point of the ruler lines up with, whoops, I moved it. <laughs> I think if I press the magnet, okay, there it goes. Whenever you press the magnet, it realigns. So um, what I'm going to do is draw a, a guide to show you where the zero point is lining up. And so the, li the zero point actually doesn't line up with the text frame. It lines up with the text where the text falls, um, in this case, physicians on call. So um, where the text would fall before the tab is being used. And so, let's see, the reason for that is because, as you can see, this, this um, text frame has an inset spacing. I'll pull up the text frame options to show you. It's, uh, inset spacing of 0.125 inches on all sides and so the ruler is not going to align itself to the text frame but rather from where the inset spacing start stops so that because that's where the text falls and you're you're um, manipulating the tabs for the text that makes sense okay anyway so quickly I'm going to show you how to adjust tabs so right now it shows you that you have we have one tab here and let's see when I when I click on these little arrows on the ruler, I can adjust the tab. They control where the tab will be, and if I hold it down, you can see that a line appears to show you where the tab is going to start. And I can move it. I think they wanted it at a quarter of an inch or so, and now I can line up these guys. As you can see, Dr. Theodore Seuss is now all of a sudden aligned with all the other items because I have more space. Like if I move this over a little bit, then it would, whoops, 
I accidentally dragged the arrow and got rid of my tab. So what happens is if you click the tab and you pull it down or up off the ruler, you lose that tab. So all I have to do is click on the ruler to add another tab. And now it, it fixes itself. So if you want to adjust it, just remember to move it left or right, but not off the ruler, unless you want to delete that tab. And also I want to show you, if I move it too close to the other text, then, um, yeah, it, that's what happens. It looks like that. <laughs> For lack of a better explanation. So yeah, I'm going to move it to the half point there and then move this to two inches and call it good.